Okay, this is just a short demonstration of using the Snowflake Data Warehouse platform to query some XML data. Uh, we're going to be loading the Open Maps XML data, uh, extracting some of the data from within that XML document, and then finally uh, sort of visualizing um, the streets in Tableau and their location on the map. Um, with the requirement to show all the amenities that sit within a one kilometer radius of, of that street um, in Tableau. So, logged into the Snowflake database, I've uh, already loaded the open map AU data. So, um, we can have a quick look at what that data looks like. Effectively, if you don't know the open maps data, it's made up of ways, nodes, um, and other elements that describe uh, uh, things on a map. Ways is a way to represent streets. So I've gone to ID 46446611, which is Cooper Street, which is um, a street I used to live in in Darwin, Australia. So you'll th see there's some, element, some elements, some references to other nodes um, along the street. Also some tags that identify the street name, the type of street it is, or a highway, a residential highway, um, and some other information that we want to take out. So in its raw format, probably not a lot of use like that. What I'm going to do is create some tables and extract the relevant information into the relevant tables. So first thing I want to get um, a kind of midpoint within the street, I'm going to extract all those node references that I just talked about. So those three references there I'm going to extract all the references and load them into a node location table. So that's going to have the ID of the node, uh, the country which I'm loading from, Australia, and the latitude, longitude, and a link to Google Maps. So how do I do that? So to insert into that table, node location, I'm going to run this query here. And this is where you start to see some of the notation of how you query XML data in Snowflake. So if I um, go through each of those. XML is the name of the column within the open map table. Um, so within the column XML, grab me the tag ID and cast that as an integer. Similar um, here, we're going to grab me the tag lat latitude and cast as a decimal 11.8. So if we go back to the raw field, you can see uh, it's going to grab out the ID and cast that as an integer. And it's also going to grab out the longitude latitude that was a way which didn't have that information, but the nodes have that information. So if I run that query um, in isolation, we can start to see that it's running on that raw XML data, but it's going to return me something that um, looks a lot more like a standard structured field. So uh, the ID node, the country, the latitude, longitude, and we also have this uh, Google link location here that we're going to use later. So we can also look up some other things within that. So I know that that ID relates to Darwin, which is the actual city where Cooper Street was. Um, we can look up um, the country Australia. So there's a latitude longitude associated with the country as well. Um, but what we'll focus on for the purpose of this demonstration is this, this Cooper Street location. So what I'm then going to do, so I've, I've, I've pulled out all the nodes within the street. I'm then going to pull out the street ID, street name, um, and some of the information, some other information relevant to that street. So um, what happened is we had three references to other nodes within that street. So I'm now going to extract from the raw data source. I'm going to use a flatten. Now a flatten will get me to these elements within the next level of, of the XML. So a flatten is going to break each of these out into separate rows. This is the powerful, a really powerful function for querying XML and JSON data. So I'm going to flatten it twice because I'm going to flatten once for the ND references and I'm going to flatten another time for the tag references. So a lateral flatten, and that's my node references, and then another lateral flatten for the name of the way, for the name of the street. Finally, I'm going to do a join with the node location table I created earlier. So you can see down here, grab me all the documents that are ways, and the, we know ways are, uh, incorporate streets. Grab me all the node references where the tag starts with ND, where the attribute name starts with ND. So for that join, for that lateral flatten, only grab me this one, this one, and this one. Finally, for the um, 
the way name, grab me the attribute that's a tag, but only the value that's equal to name, because we want to get the name of the street. So only grab me that element there because it's um, a tag and it's a name. And then we're going to grab the Cooper Street value, um, which we have here. So the, from the way name, the value attribute V is going to be the street name. Got if I've run that. So that's extracting every single street within Australia. The street name, uh, the latitude, longitude of each street based on those multiple nodes getting the median, so it's getting the midpoint of the street, of the nodes within the street, and storing that in a separate table called street AU. Just to show you what that looks like, same ID that I grabbed before, but now we've got a record to Cooper Street in Australia and the longitude and latitude of that street. So how many streets in Australia did we extract? Uh, 1.2 million streets. Next part, the question was, okay, so for a particular street, what are the amenities surrounding that location in that area? So what I'm going to do is now extract the amenities out of that same XML data. So we're going to flatten that twice to get the amenity name and the um, amenity, only the amenity elements. So again, we're using that same XML syntax to extract that information. So we're getting the latitude and longitude from the XML column. Um, and from the flattens, we're going to get the amenity, what the amenity is, and what the amenity name is. And we're going to insert that into that table. So we'll just run that query there. Now if we want to have a quick look at those. Just get the first 10. So you can see now it's uh, the amenities of police station. It's the... Nabua police station and the latitude and longitude of each of those amenities. So we've got things like banks, schools, fuel stations, community centers. So we're starting to form a picture now of, of, of the end game. So the final thing was, okay, the question was, find me for a particular street, all the amenities that exist within one kilometer of that street. So I'm going to join my street table, which included Cooper Street. And I'm going to join that with the amenity table, which is this one here. And this is a uh, geospatial function or, or a, uh, a latitude longitude function that allows you to search, um, giving it a set of uh, coordinates, latitude, longitude, um, two sets, a distance between those. So I'm giving it the latitude and longitude of the street um, and the latitude longitude of the amenity. And I'm saying anything less than one, which is less than one kilometer, return that back. So that's going to return me a table with uh, all the amenities joined to a street, all within a one kilometer radius. So that's probably going to be the most intensive query because it's, um, it's quite a lot of processing it's going to have to do in that join to do that one kilometer search of the area. What I will show you here is how you kind of analyze what's happening behind the scenes. We've got our query profiler. It's showing us exactly how much is scanned. Um, so we're using quite a large instance for this because to build the tables, we've spun up a large warehouse, three extra large warehouse, so we can get the processing done quickly. And then we'll change that to a smaller size when we visualize in Tableau. If we want to dive in a little bit further to what the query is doing, um, we can use the query profiler, which is a live representation of, of what's happening behind the scenes in Snowflake. So it's creating a table at the end. We can see here 60,000 uh, amenities were joined with 1.18 million streets. The joins, the most intensive part of that process, it's taking 99.8%, and that's doing that uh, one kilometer search um, within the, um, between the two tables. So, um, while that's finished, yep, that's just finished now. Um, so we can do a quick look, just get 10 records out of that. So you can see here, so for Devereaux Street, at that longitude, latitude, there's a fuel station, and there's the Warnaka Nabil uh, fuel station. So now we've got a table which has got all the amenities close by. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I've done the most intensive part of my process. I'm going to spin down to a smaller size, just to save my costs. Let's go down to an extra large now. So we're running on a bit of a smaller compute cluster. What we can do now is um, create a, 
Um, we don't actually need that. That's an old one. What I want to do now is um, create a pivot view of that table to give me a count of these amenities for each street. So this is going to pivot all these rows and it's going to bring them into account of how many fuel stations there are for Devereux Street, uh, how many bars there are for Devereux Street. That's what this pivot function means. So I'm just going to create a view for this one. I don't need to copy that out into another table. So if I'm going to now go from my final view, grabbing the street ID, which was my Cooper Street example, we've now started to form a view of Cooper Street in Australia has four bars, one marketplace, one post office, and two restaurants, and one pub. Um, it's not a lot, Darwin is a small town. But as you can see now, we've got some really valuable information um, around what's in, uh, what are the amenities within a particular street. So the final part is you might want to visualize that within uh, a map of Australia. And we could also create a search dialogue so that we could um, search for a street and show all the amenities that's, that sit close to that street. So we'll just connect to our Snowflake instance. Just get my password. Just going to use the ETL user for this demo. So we did that. We're going to use the same warehouse that we used to build the demo. It's in the demo database. The schema was HC. Now we want that final view we created, which was street amenity count. So we'll bring that over here. And we can just have a quick look at that data just to make sure it's correct. Yes, it is. Okay. Now we can start to visualize that. <clears throat> so I'm not a Tableau expert, but you can kind of guess what I'm going to do here. I'm going to, um, first of all, um, create my search filter for this. So we're going to do that by creating a parameter. I'm going to call that a search box and a string. So this is going to be the search box where I can search for a street. So that's been created. And then we want to create a calculated field. And this is how you restrict the results to the search field. So we'll call it search field. Contains the street name in the search box. That's saying in the search box, does it contain that street name? And that's going to then filter out records um, that, that we put in the search box. So you want to drag that in as a filter and say when that condition's true, show me the results. And then we want to um, show my parameter crop control over here. So we can search for Cooper Street like that. Finally, we want to drag some obvious fields, the latitude field. We want to drag the longitude field. And that's not giving me anything interesting because it's the average longitude latitude of all my streets. So we want to start dragging in our streets now. I want to show that on a map. Uh, now, Tableau's grab those rows. I don't want that. I'm just going to drag them back out. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much now giving me all these Cooper Streets within Australia. So I've done a quick search for Cooper Street. Um, another street I lived in was Christie Street. Let's have a look at that one. There we go. So in Queensland we have Christie Street. Let's go back to Cooper. Uh, finally, um, that's not showing us the answer to our question. What are the amenities within one kilometer of Cooper Street? We can just grab these counts of the amenities that we were interested in, drag them in there as well. So Cooper Street has four bars, one marketplace, one pub. What about over in New South Wales? quite a few restaurants at Cooper Place down there. So already now you have a functioning dashboard. We can search for streets. What was another street uh, in Darwin that I knew? Brat Road.
for our railway workshops. So we've now got a fully functioning map where we can search for streets. Uh, we could go a level four further and, and push um, a street map into Tableau, but you're probably better off uh, having someone who's more of an expert in Tableau as to how to overlay streets on, onto, uh, onto Tableau. But as you can see, that was all very quick. It was using an extra large to uh, query this map, and you were getting back instantaneous results. Um, if we switch back, we can see all the queries that, uh, that Tableau was firing against Snowflake and how quickly they were returning. So they're all returning in under a second. So it's so fast, so powerful. Um, we could even probably have resized that warehouse to be something a bit smaller and still got um, decent response times um, from that. And that is about it. Any questions, forward those through uh, to... Snowflake Academy and um, best of luck.